Every year, as ski season comes to a close, every mountain's employees find extra time to mess around with pranks and equipment, and sometimes even prank equipment. One of the mountain's lift mechanics, Seth, wanted to build a longboard snow skate, and he was going to cut the deck out of ply with a jigsaw. I told him I could run it on the Shaper Origin if he could draw a rough design for me to work with. He gave me a pretty detailed print that was easy to block out in Shaper Studio. I overlaid the blocking with multiple shapes, and then used Shapeshifter to combine and smooth out the geometry. It looked like a bomb, it's for bombing down the runs, and his name starts with an S, so I made an inlaid S-bomb logo. After he rode the initial snowscape for a month, we talked about changes to make for the second iteration, like widening the back end, recessing some of the hardware points. To draw it up, I simply duplicated the original design, reblocked it with wider dimensions, and then worked on laying out shapes into a design that I found pleasing. I tried a few different things and reworked the tail design a couple times until I was happy with the refined shape. While there are some real advantages to using the simplified 2D CAD of Shaper Studio for drawings, I think my favorite feature is the Plan tab where I can encode depths and experiment with different bit diameters to figure out the most efficient way to set up the cutting. If something looks wrong, or if a design will require too many bit changes, I can go back and forth between design and plan and dial it in. For this second version of the S-Bomb, I wanted to do a neater nameplate, cut out a copper, so it can weather and age over time. I pulled the original bomb logo shape from the first version and experimented with Studio's text tools. Unfortunately, the available fonts didn't include a stencil typeface, which was Seth's original preference, so I imported the text from Inkscape and finalized the design. I had some no-void, marine-grade birch plywood left over from another project that was just big enough to use for the snow skate. Cutting it out went pretty easy. I used an 8mm bit and left a quarter inch skin of material on the perimeter cut to keep it anchored. Jigsaw, flush trim, sand, profile, sand, then I sprayed it with clear coat and let it dry while I cut the copper. When I went to glue in the nameplate, it was clearly too big for the pocket. I checked the files, everything matched, but for pocketing I'd been running offsets, so I'm pretty sure I just didn't remove the offset before I cut the perimeter incorrectly. I went back to Shaper Studio, made a duplicate file with everything centered on the leash hole that was already cut in both the deck and the copper. I made a grid that referenced the flat edge of the tail and then set the grid center by dropping the probe down the leash hole. I tested the alignment by doing a very shallow cut on the leash hole. The entire fix between design and cutting took less than 10 minutes. I brought the new deck up to the ski shop and pulled the first deck off the trucks that Seth had fabricated. Since we're working with CNC accuracy, there was no need to remount the ski, just bolt the new deck on it. But it only took one quick run to determine that the new ply was way too stiff to allow the ski to flex. So the second deck came back to the workbench for modification. I chose to core out material from the underside of the deck to soften the flex. I used Shapeshifter to model the trucks, reserving the material around them. Then I used it again to join those pads with a center rib. I duplicated the entire board's shape and offset it from the edges of the deck by about an inch, leaving side rails for hand grips as well as extra strength. The only challenge was figuring out how to set an accurate grid on a curved shape with only one flat edge. I used Studio to measure the Y distance from a guideline bounding box to the top edge of the truck mounting holes, and then used those holes as grid probe points. It worked like a charm, and I could visually check it against the scanned image. I removed two-thirds of the deck's thickness with an 8mm bit. I left a step around the perimeter of the pockets to allow for a quarter-inch radius round nose bit to clean it up and leave a fillet around the edges of the recess. The flex wasn't quite as soft as I wanted, so I ground the center rib down thinner with my Rotex. After some sanding and a coat of black paint in the pocket and another coat of clear coat to seal it all up, it was ready to head back to the shop and bolt on. A few runs confirmed that the flex was good and this version of the board was ready to ride. New design iterations were fairly easy to draw up and remix in Shaper Studio. The accuracy and flexibility of the origin made it possible to revise existing prototypes without having to start over from scratch. <laughs>